All right, we made it to day seven. I'm pretty sore from yesterday's workout, but I had some stuff to do in the morning. I went to collect some packages, it's in the back. Uh, I did some groceries, went to the supplement store, had to buy some protein powder. Now I'm gonna go home, clean up a bit, do the chores that I have left, and hopefully we should be hitting chest today. I bought some whey protein at the supplement store and since it was a big purchase the guy gave me some pre-workout. I don't think it's that good of a pre-workout. It's called Black Inferno or something, I can't remember. But I'll be using it and I'll see how I feel and how the pump is. But yeah, let's get home, continue our day. So I just got done uh, eating. Now I'm going to train. I just had some beef and uh, that cottage cheese tortilla for the carbs. As I said, when I went to the supplement store, the guy gave me this sample pack of pre-workout. Because I'm just interested in knowing which pre-workout is good or if I should try or not. But he gave me this uh, brand. I don't think it's that good but we'll see. So this one that he gave me it's from the brand called Stacker Europe and it's called Inferno Black Tropical Touchdown 10 grams for one serving. I don't know it has uh, 4 grams of L-citrulline, 3 grams of beta alanine, 1 gram of L-arginine, 1 gram of taurine and 0.3 grams of caffeine and hydrous I don't know, I'll have to watch some videos from Derek, more plates, more dates, to know if this is a good mix, but it smells good. So I'm gonna have this 15 minutes before I go to work out. I'm basically gonna drink it now, actually. I'm gonna go work out in, yeah, 15 minutes. Let's have a taste. Smells good. I mixed in 300 ml of water instead of the recommended 200 ml, but that's not going to make any difference. I know that some ingredients make you itch places where you're not supposed to be itching while working out, especially the posterior, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. I don't know if it's the... L-arginine or L-citrulline that does it. I don't know, I've seen a lot of pre-workout videos and this mix doesn't look that good. But yeah, we'll see. I mean, it says high caffeine content. I don't know if 0.3 grams of caffeine is, is a lot, but... Today is going to be chest. Looking forward to it. So I'm not going to do any flat bench. I'm going to do incline, four sets of barbell and four sets of um, dumbbells. And then I'm basically going to finish it with those ring push-ups. I'll show you guys. I think three exercises is it, you know. I mean, if I include flat benches, maybe I'll do three sets of flat benches, you know, just to increase the number of exercises and sets. I'm watching a video from uh, Renaissance Periodization. Uh, it's about how little can you train and still grow muscles. Now, I don't want to train as little. I actually want to train as much as I can. But apparently training each muscle group each week for 5 to 10 sets, like this range, you know, Five, of course, you'll get lesser results. Ten, you'll get more results. But basically, each muscle group for five to ten sets every week should help you build strength and hypertrophy. So that's good. But if you can do more, definitely do more. We want more muscles. We don't want less. 
but I don't want to gain muscle at the expense of losing flexibility. I mean, I still want to be able to scratch my back and and stuff like that, you know, but I'm going to finish this pre-workout and then we're off to hopefully a nice chest session. So, just warming up right now, once we're warmed up, we will start with incline barbell press, then 4 sets of that, and then after 4 sets of dumbbell presses, and then I'll do 3 sets of flat bench, alright, and then we're gonna finish it with ring pushes to really squeeze in Ideally to activate the entire chest to squeeze. Let's get going. Pre-workout is... I don't know, I don't feel that different. I just have a bit of tingling. Maybe it's placebo because I know that you're supposed to have tingling sensations when you take pre-workout. But, uh, yeah, I don't feel that different. I'm just excited about the workout, I guess. <sighs> نحن عصبة الأسد قالوا إنها وعد نحن عصبة الأسد أتى زحفنا زائلون للأبد ثم نادوا حسمت إنها قد رسمت فأتى ردنا صعقت بل سحقت قالوا إنها وعد نحن عصبة الأسد فأتاهم زحفنا زائلون للأبد ثم نادوا حسمت إنها قد رسمت عصبة الشبر حلي واسمعي من القرار هجر الديار دوما نحن فرسان النهار عصبة الشبر حلي واسمعي من القرار هجر الديار دوما نحن فرسان النهار واشربي لذل كأسا وخذي كل صغار فرحلي دون الرجوع إن جلابك السترى فأتاهم زحفنا زائلون للأبد ثم نادوا حسنت إنها قد رسمت فأتاهم ردنا And that is it for chest. I gotta be honest. That pre-workout did nothing. And I can safely say that I've had better chest sessions without this pre-workout. But you know, a lot of factors depend, you know. Your sleep, diet fatigue level and I must say I am a bit fatigued from uh, these past couple of days it's not an excuse but I do feel good honestly uh, if I have to say the pump is great I do feel my chest I wanted to add some triceps in but I'm like nah I'm gonna go take a shower as usual I'm gonna eat and I'll talk to you then oh Feeling big on this bulk. <sighs> Feeling big, but 
I must say, I do have a lot of fat right now. Fattest and biggest I've been. <sighs> and that's not my final form. <laughs> but we continue on the bulk. Uh, as I said, gonna go eat, shower, and then we talk. All right, guys, took a shower. I'm completely exhausted. I don't know why this... I think it was the pre-workout. Like, I know I'm fatigued and tired, but I think it's the crash from the pre-workout that's making me feel completely drained for some reason. So definitely not gonna take any more of that or any sort of pre-workout. I think the natural stuff is more than enough. Like, if you want to have caffeine, just drink some coffee, you know. I feel much better on coffee than this pre-workout that have 0.3 grams of caffeine. Anyways, to each their own. So, post-workout meal, we have one tortilla without any sort of filling. I already had some cottage cheese, so I just thought I'll just warm up a tortilla. Then we have a beautiful beef steak, medium rare. I still didn't cut it, but I'm very sure that it's medium rare. Let's actually check it out. And then we have 125 grams of calf liver. Beautiful pink. Liver is just, in my opinion, a superfood. And not just my opinion, opinions of doctors and nutritionists. For some reason, calf liver is more expensive. This was 15 euros a kilo compared to normal cow liver, which is 5 euros a kilo. I mean, liver is really tasty. I really enjoy it, especially with bread. I'm not a big fan of eating it uh, alone without anything because it is somewhat overpowering. There's a lot of ways you can cook liver. You can just heat up a cast iron, put some olive oil or butter and um, fry it like that. Or you can make it into a curry. My mom can make a really nice liver curry with... Uh, Naan or porota is really amazing. So it's the seventh day of my 30 day challenge. And when I look back, I really started this challenge because of Sam Sulek. I said it in the beginning of the first video that Sam Sulek has inspired individuals to start creating content. And that's really the reason why I started. What I've learned from him is that if you remain consistent with what you do, you will reach results that are favorable for you. Now, when it comes to following and learning from individuals, you should always be open-minded. You can learn from anybody and, and everyone, you know? There's no limit to that. But you have to be aware and self-critical and critical about what they teach. Now, when it comes to Sam Sulek, I love the inspiration he gives and the consistency that he has. And I've definitely learned from that. That's something I can learn from him. But do I support his steroid abuse? No, but that doesn't make him someone you shouldn't follow, you know? Nobody's perfect. So you have to be critical in understanding a person's message. You cannot be blindly following them. I mean, I really dislike people that blindly follow influencers and individuals who have power. For example, Andrew Tate. Personally speaking, I completely agree with a lot of things he says. However, the stuff that made him viral, I don't completely agree with or I completely disagree with. Unfortunately, Andrew Tate has a lot of that type of follower who blindly follows him or only follow the things that he said as a joke. And that's not necessarily Andrew Tate's fault. Of course, Tate has to be more critical and more careful with the stuff he says online, especially because he's famous now. 
But the main fault is the guy who follows him blindly. That individual, that fan has no brain power to distinguish between the jokes and the serious stuff. Anyways, this is my take on how you should follow individuals. You're free to follow anybody as long as you have the correct way of critically analyzing what the individual is preaching. A lot of influencers try to manipulate their fans, that's just the truth. So, as people who look up to other individuals, we have to think critically. But yeah, I'm just gonna finish my meal and then edit this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is definitely a rest day because I work in the afternoon. I don't think I'll be able to work out in the morning. I still didn't complete uh, some chores that I have left, so I'm gonna leave tomorrow morning for that. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hope everyone's doing well. Stay sharp, stay active. Peace.